communication scholar applied the concept of diffusion to innovations and named the theory diffusion of innovations. The theory seeks to explain how, why, and at what rate new ideas and technology spread. He popularized the theory in his book Diffusion of Innovations, which was first published in 1962. But who was Everett Rogers? He was a communication scholar, sociologist, writer, and teacher. A lot of talents for one person. Rogers was born on his family's Pinehurst farm in Karo, Iowa in 1931. His father loved electromechanical farm innovations, but was highly reluctant to utilize biological chemical innovations. He refused to adopt the new hybrid seed corn, which yielded more crop and was resistant to drought. Although, he did adopt it after the Iowa drought in 1936, after he saw the resistant hybrid corn in his neighbor's farm standing still while his crop just wilted. Perhaps his father was his inspiration for the theory of diffusion of innovations. Rogers didn't plan to attend university until his school teacher took him and some of his classmates to Ames to visit Iowa State University. I wonder, what if he did not attend? Uh, okay, now back to the diffusion of innovations. Roger wasn't the first to introduce the concept of diffusion. It was first studied by the French sociologist Gabriel Trade and German and Austrian anthropologists and geographers such as Frederick Radzo and Leo Fobnes. Believe it or not, but the study took off in the subfield of rural sociology in the Midwestern United States in the 1920s and 1930s. Because of rapid advancements in agricultural technology, Ryan and Gross decided to study the adoption of a hybrid corn seed in Iowa and created a distant paradigm for diffusion. Since then, the theory has been applied in numerous contexts like medical sociology, communications, marketing, and many others. What did Rogers do then? He synthesized research from over 508 diffusion studies across the field that initially influenced the theory. Anthropology, early sociology, rural sociology, education, industrial sociology, and medical sociology. Using his synthesis, Rogers produced a theory of the adoption of innovations among individuals and organizations. So, Rogers argues that diffusion is the process by which an innovation is communicated over time among the participants in a social system. He proposed that four main elements influence the spread of a new idea, the innovation itself, communication channels, time, and a social system. Now, innovations are a broad category relative to the current knowledge of the analyzed unit. Any idea, practice, or object that is perceived new by an individual or individuals can be considered an innovation available for study. Adopters are the minimal unit of analysis. In most studies, they are individuals, but they can possibly be organizations, clusters within social networks, or even countries. Communication channels allow the transfer of information from one unit to the other. For the diffusion to occur, there must be established communication patterns or capabilities between parties as a minimum. Time. Time is essential for innovations to be adopted. Very rarely are they adopted instantaneously. And last but not least is the social system element, which is a combination of external influences like mass media and governmental mandates, and internal influences like strong and weak social relationships and distance from opinion leaders. Well, enough of that. Aren't you interested in the characteristics of innovations? Some of the most common characteristics among studies are relative advantage, or the perceived use gained by the innovation relative to current tools, how compatible an innovation is with pre-existing systems, the level of difficulty or complexity in learning to use it, the trainability and testability of the innovation, the potential of reinvention, and the observed effects. Okay, I got a few questions for you. Yes, for you. Do you have connections with a broad community, a city or so? Do you visit metropolitan areas frequently? Do you have the power to create change? If you answered yes, then congratulations, you are an individual adopter. If you were given the right motivation while possessing the ability, you would have most probably adopted the innovation. The five stages of the adoption process are as follows. Knowledge, this happens when you are first exposed to an innovation and not yet inspired to find out more. Persuasion is the stage where you become interested in the innovation and start looking for more information. Decision, the most difficult stage of- Created using Powtoon.